Hello everyone, welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Hamvar, and today I am coming at you with a a new uh, video. I'm not doing the tag this year, but it is my booktube anniversary. Uh, this should come up on the 19th. Uh, I created my channel on July 20th of 2021, and I posted my first video on July 21st. Uh, I don't know how many of you have stuck around the entire time, but anyways, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone. Uh, I'm sitting at 888 subscribers the day I recorded this, which is a few days uh, beforehand. Um, Wednesday will be a busy day for me, actually. I'm graduating uh, with my bachelor's degree. It took forever. Uh, I graduated with my <laughs> associates quite a while ago, but um, so it'll be a busy day. Uh, it'll be hot, and I'm sweating because I don't have any AC, and it's hot. Um, but I just kind of want to go over some highlights, I guess, from the past year, maybe past two years. I don't remember actually the subscribers I was sitting at last year. Uh, 888 is kind of surprising to me because I honestly don't expect to get much because I don't really like feed the algorithm anything that it wants. Um, and yet I still have 888 subscribers. Uh, and so that is very pleasant. Um, I've done over 200 reviews at this point. I think about 80 something poetry videos as well, maybe closer to 90. Um, I've, you know, gotten plenty of arcs. I've blurbed a book. Um, I've been to some conferences, some like writing conferences and conventions, uh, met several authors in person, got a bunch of books signed. Uh, my reviews are on the radio. Um, I've published my first story about a year ago, actually, and I've had a few published since then. You can go to my website, uh, link down below for that. Um, had some fun stuff like took in the it had to be murder adaptation recently i didn't talk to nearly as many people in year two and have nearly as many guests on the channel and i didn't really guest on nearly nearly many as many channels i did have my fun um day of might stream in october where i had oliver and nate uh well nat 20 i guess and uh also uh raf and that was fun uh, but i kind of wanted to look um back at a few what maybe could have been right so i've been watching booktube for about a decade okay it's been a long time since i started watching booktube um back then i largely remember watching people who did like uh, ya stuff um there wasn't much else besides that uh you just have people like sam's nonsense um who did read some adult fantasy she's actually a big fan of hob and that's the reason i read assassin's apprentice uh, she's pretty inactive now, but I don't think anyone in the booktube community seems to know she exists, even though the booktube community loves Hob. Um, I was, I don't, but um, that's okay. Um, but I remember um, since I've, you know, been aware of the community and actively participating in it for, you know, so long, I thought at several points I'd like to become part of it, uh, including back before I got married. Probably my first thought was sometime in 2014, um, way long ago. And I was living in a fifth wheel RV uh, with my parents still at the time. And uh, there's no chance in heck, which is why it didn't happen um, until I got married. And then I thought there was a good chance potentially I could start a booktube channel. And I was, oh, I was living in Arizona at the time. Uh, I started this channel living in Colorado, um, but I was living in Arizona. And in August 2019, I actually almost started a booktube channel. I don't have the recording anymore. I couldn't make it work, actually, because I made a slideshow. I didn't finish it, but I made a slideshow of a book I wanted to review. And um, <clears throat> I made a recording, like an audio like memo thing. And I, that memo has been lost, so we can't listen to it. Um, but I do actually still have the slides. And this is the book I wanted to review, A Pilgrimage of Swords by Anthony Ryan. This is the only thing I've read by Anthony Ryan. As of now, I was excited about it for two reasons. One, it was an arc, and I think this might have been the first arc I'd ever gotten. Um, I got it from NetGalley. Um, I could be wrong. There could be some other arcs I had gotten. But this one excited me because this book is actually good, and it's a novella, actually. Um, what's interesting here is that this is really probably my first introduction to Sword and Sorcery. And as if you watch the channel, you know I'm a fan of Sword and Sorcery. Uh, this is not a popular Sword and Sorcery series. It is very contemporary, and I now know it is very much inspired you could say by elric uh and it's rather generic also in its setting it's not as weird i feel like as it could be um and i haven't gotten to the other novellas um since then basically but it was a weird experience for me because i was reading something that wasn't really epic fantasy which was really the only type of fantasy i read back then so i made this little review and i, I pointed out i hadn't read many novellas in fact all but one of them uh and edge dancer is not really a novella anyways 
Um, but all but one of the novellas I had read um, were Brandon Sanderson novellas. <laughs> I, I've read at this point I had read most of Brandon Sanderson stuff. That hasn't really changed much since 2019, to be honest. I haven't read nearly as much of the stuff since then. Um, I haven't kept up, so to speak. Um, but I had read this Cold Steel and Secrets book by Rosemary Jones, which is Forgotten Realms novella, divided into four parts terribly for like sales purposes. It's a ripoff, uh, but it is a good novella. It takes place in Neverwinter. Um, and I like Rosemary Jones' style, and I like Forgotten Realms. This is actually one of the first things that got me to Forgotten Realms. This is before I started my blog on the Forgotten Realms, so that was one of the earliest things I'd also read. So obviously this idea of like I haven't read many novellas, like I had read a lot less back then. And so that was important to me to say the novellas I had read. Uh, now, I don't want to say I'm well-read, but I am a lot more well-read than I was back then. Um, <clears throat> I definitely don't start my reviews like this anymore. And I hadn't read any of Anthony, Anthony Ryan's other works. And these are some of his other ones. Uh, Blood Song, I hear good things about, but that's about it. Uh, they're look, they look really mixed everywhere else. So... Um, that has not changed either. I have not read anything by him. So um, again, uh, I, I would actually probably mention this in a review if this is the first book I read by someone, but I don't know. This format is different. Um, and then there's the party. I kind of go over the characters here. We have priest, seeker, book, player, Maisha, Maisha, I don't know, and Kusif. I can't even remember who the main character is, but it might be pr uh, seeker. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, actually, but I, I thought it was interesting that they have this, like, uh, Glenn Cook style of thing. You see it in Malazan as well, uh, where they have titles rather than... And they're very much obviously titles. Uh, these last two kind of seem like names, but... And then there's Pilgrim... Oh, that's what it is. So it's not Seeker. Pilgrim is the main character, so it has his title name. And his sword, which is very much, at the time, I thought, akin to Nightblood. And now I know a little better, and it's pro more akin... <clears throat> To an extent, to Stormbringer. In other ways, it is more kind of the Nightblood because it talks a lot more, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but this evil sword thing, um, it probably doesn't even come from Stormbringer. There's something like it, you know, in Tolkien stuff, which wasn't even published until to like 2007. You know, it was wrote, written like 100 years ago. Um, and there's stuff like it in some Paul Anderson as well. Stormbringer is probably the most famous version of a dark sword that's sentient and evil. Uh, and then there's uh, this place. The place is the Execration. And I, I don't remember. I guess this is probably like all parts of it. I thought the City of Spires in the Library Bones section was exceptionally awesome. I remember it well to this day. That might be the weirdest part here that like deserves some mention mentioning. The Kraken's Gate Grave was pretty cool too. I don't really remember much about the stuff at the end. The Glass Sea seems like a nuke went off there in the Mad God. I remember thinking it was kind of clever, um, but not like super mind-blowing, at least thinking back on it now. Um, but it was cool. It was a fun novella. So anyways, that was my first experience that I, you know, that really could have turned into a booktube channel. I almost certainly would not have been called Liam's Lyceum back then. I don't really know what I would have been called. Um, now, when the pandemic started, a lot of people started their um, their channels. So I did not. Uh, around that time, I was still in school. I was almost done with my associate's degree, actually. And uh, what I did start was my blog, ForgottenRealmsReading.com or the Forgotten Realms Lyceum. Right? Um, that blog, I did not actually start because of the pandemic. I started it like right around the time most places were shutting down because of it. Uh, but I didn't start it because of that. I started it because I had read a lot of Forgotten Realms novels. And that's just kind of coincidentally near uh, March 2020 range. Uh, my daughter was born a couple months before that. And so I was, I would be sitting a lot during the day rocking her so she wouldn't cry. And, in my, and I'd be reading these mass market paperbacks of Forgotten Realms novels. And I'd read some before. And I, I read a lot, particularly with her at the time, just sitting in that chair, um, basically, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I was, after I'd read a ton of them, I was like, you know what? I should read all of these. Um, so the pandemic stuff was kind of uh, coincidental. Uh, but I started my blog then. Now, there was another chance of me starting um, with Hembar and Arvazek, which is why actually, if you guys don't know, I introduced myself as Hembar, obviously, a lot. And that's kind of a callback because before this, I was more in the video game community. I mean, so. Um, and my channel was Hembar and Arvazek. Arvazek was my brother. 
Um, and this is a like a reference. If you ever play like old, so if you watch like old EverQuest stuff, the the developers are known by their in-game name. So like Brad McQuaid famously is known as Ardoon, right? Um, and people will just sometimes call him Ardoon, even though his name is Brad. All right. So uh, and it was the same thing. So Himbar was a name I made for a dwarf character in Lord of the Rings Online several years ago. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it's one that stuck for online usage. I had other older online names. Uh, like godlike uh, and hallmaster but those are a little less lame or a little lamer rather and like nuggy and stuff so i mean like, they didn't age very well um it, at least not to me and so i i went with hemvar and there was another game we were we were actually uh, associated with kind of at the time um we were uh affiliated even um with saga Lysemia, and like the main guys there were like grinfail and you had other um like a drop bore right uh, and so they would go by their their names, and still this day, I still talk to Tim, who is Rinfail, but I generally refer to him as Rinfail. <laughs> and so Hembar, right? That's me. Um, I didn't do a ton on the gaming stuff. I did streaming on Twitch um, for those aware, unaware, but there was a YouTube channel as well. And I was thinking about because I was a big fan of Saga Lucemia, which sadly doesn't really exist anymore. That did turn into one of my first reviews, actually, as Echoes of the Past. If you go back to one of my first five reviews, probably um, it was for that book. But I thought about doing one in May of 2020. I actually have the audio recording of that. I'm not going to share it with you. Um, but it is an attempt at an Echoes of the Past review uh, more than a year before I actually created my channel. Um, so that is interesting just for me to think, like, what could have been uh, type of thing. But anyways, I don't really I don't really have much for you guys besides just a little bit of the story time and um, besides the fact that I... I Things are going to look a little different, maybe, because I'm graduating. I'm not entirely sure. I should be going to grad school, um, but I don't have quite a job. I do, but it's like, you know, the labor job and working through school, so I still have that. I don't have one lined up for after when I graduate. I'm looking for one, um, if anyone can help me there, but I probably not. Um, and then, but I just want to keep on giving you um, the stuff I want. I mean, that's really why I started my channel is I wanted to produce content that I wanted which is why the tags kind of fell out, my TBRs kind of fell out, um, and my book hauls fell out very quickly. Because um, I don't really care that much for that, that stuff. I've never done really a top 10. Uh, and yeah, just stuff like that. And, and so like I wanted to be like produce content that I liked. So that's why I do the poetry videos every week, even though a lot of people have not done, they don't really do Poetry Thursday all that much. But some people do, and it kind of goes up and down. I've been pretty consistent with it though. Uh, and then I do the two reviews a week because uh, that's important. I feel like when I joined BookTube, there is a noticeable lack of reviews. Or if there were reviews, it was over generally the same books, which I can understand you want to be part of this conversation, part of the community. Uh, and I do still read some popular books, of course, um, as long as they're good. That's uh, the goal, right? Um, but hopefully I can give you the content that some of some of you like. Uh, if I do ever hit a 1,000 subscribers, that's probably when I'll do a q and I haven't done one before i mean if you ask me a question i'll probably answer it anyways you can go in the discord if you don't want to do it in youtube comments um but uh i will uh potentially do a q a if i hit a thousand subscribers i don't know if that'll ever happen uh, i always feel like that there wouldn't be enough questions because i don't feel like anyone has any questions uh so but i know a lot of people like doing q a's but i don't really want to do one for a two-year anniversary but like i said if i ever do hit a thousand subscribers there will be a q a i guess um so Look out for that if that ever happens. Uh, I keep on fluctuating. I don't. I kind of crawl up with subscribers. Like I'm at 888 right now. I was eight, at 889. Um, I think this morning. So, um, anyways, uh, thanks for thanks for stopping by. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully, I can give you some good content. Hopefully, it's useful, valuable. I mean, I do do kind of go to school for like literary purposes. Um, language is also my thing. So if hopefully you can get some good language usage out of me, um, but uh, no, most people don't care. Um, but anyways, uh, this is Liam from Liam's Lyceum. Uh, I will catch you next time.